Hello everyone, in this tutorial where we will see how to use Recipe Python Application Programming Interface or API inside a Jupyter Notebook. So you might be familiar with the uh, graphical user interface of, of, of Recipe which contains different tabs and buttons and so on. But actually what's happening each time you push on a button, uh, the graphical user interface is calling the Python API to do the work. So the Python API is basically a set of of functions and methods which does the real work behind beyond the graphical user interface. So why would you want to use it? Well, sometimes you want to be able to reproduce your workflow and to deal with lots of data sets in the same way. Uh, and so that might be a reason to use the Python application programming interface. You might also want to integrate uh, the, the Python API with some other part of the code uh, that you might be doing. So, in this tutorial, we will use a Jupyter Notebook environment that I will run locally. For this, I've downloaded the WinPython package. I'm running Windows 10. And inside the WinPython package, you can see there is a Jupyter Notebook executable. I just double click on it and it opens this uh, interface when you can see different notebooks. If it's the first time you run it, um, you also need to install the Recipe package. So to do that, you need to open the WinPython command prompt and type pip install Recipe. The instruction will be in the description. You just need to do it once because once it's installed, that's that's okay. So um, you can create a new Jupyter notebook by clicking this new button here, or if you already have a notebook available, you can just upload it locally on on this server. I've created a notebook called Test. And here it's what it looks like. So the notebook is a web environment. You see it's running in, into my browser right now. And it contains different cells. You get code cells, which is the default. And you have also markdown cells when you can write title, description of what you're doing, and so on. So to use the, the Recipe Python API, the first thing to do is to import this um, R2 class. So let's type from Recipe import R2. To run the cell, I just press Shift, Enter, and the cell is run. You can see the number here has been increasing. Once I import this R2 class, I'm going to create an object. I'm going to instantiate the class. So I do k equal R2, and then I'm going to specify that I want it to be just a simple um, 2D survey with DC resistivity. If I was going to use, for instance, uh, 2D but with uh, IP, I would build CR2 if I was going to use 3D, I'm going to put R3T and so on, you, you get the trick. By default is, is R2 as well. Again, enter, and I can see that um, my K object now, if I type K, it's an object stored at this place in the memory. Uh, you can see also that by default, the working directory is set to an internal directory inside the recipe package. If you want to supply uh, a specific directory, you need to add a dear name argument here um, and set it up to the location you want. Right, the first thing we're going to do is to create a survey, actually. So I've downloaded the example folder from Recipe. And inside this example folder, so you can get it on the, on the GitLab repository, I'm going to try to import the DC2D example. So I put the quotes and I passed the path. So I want to import the syscall.csv file. I need to specify the type of survey, you know, if it's protocol and so on. So in this case, it's just syscall. And then, just for Windows user, if you use the backslash notation for the path, you need to add a little r in front of the string. So just before the first quote, you just helps to understand that this string is actually a row string and the backslash are not there to escape the characters. Um, if you just use the normal slash, so that's that's fine. Let's run this. 344 reciprocal, um, uh, 344 measurements imported. Now what I can do is visualize it using the pseudo section. I can write show pseudo 
and the graph is directly visible right below the code cell. Similarly, I can fit an error model. A poor error model. There it is. So is it really the similar graph that you see in the graphical interface just right now there in Jupyter Notebook? If you want to use the error model in the inversion, you need to set this little flag k.error to true. By default, it's set to false, so it means that even if the error model is fitted, so we've computed what would be the error for all the measurements, they're not going to be used by default. So you need to set this flag to tell the inversion to use them. This is a little trick. Uh, you don't need to do that in the graphical interface. We can also create a mesh. which is going to be a triangular mesh, and then we want also to show the mesh. And yeah, looks good. Then we can invert the survey. And you got the output directly here, like if you were running from the command line. And then we can show the results. There it is. So this might be a very, very condensed and simple way to do it. If you want to know more about each of these um, methods, basically, that you call here, you can always do is help results, And then you run this, and you get the entire documentation. So with all the argument, arguments, uh, the parameter of die available, basically, here. Um, and that's it. So, oh yeah, right. So if you go back to the documentation website, this uh, help that I just show you actually are available in this API documentation section. You can find the same here. You got the name of the class here, the R2 class, and then the different method, add data, add filter IP, and so on, and uh, uh, different parameters that you can type in and explaining how you want to do to do this. So if you have a question, you don't know how to use a specific one, you can type help into the Jupyter Notebook, but you can also go to the API documentation website and look for the right method to call. If you want to know more about the application programming interface, what I would recommend to do is to look at the gallery of examples. So it's also in the documentation website, and it's basically a set of Jupyter Notebook that we wrote um, featuring different aspects of the software. So here, for instance, I'm going to open the R2 basic tutorial. Uh, you can see it's a Jupyter notebook. You get the code cells, you get uh, the output of it. And if you go at the bottom of this, you can find that you can download uh, this uh, example as a Jupyter notebook, so the I, IP, Y, and B. But also, you can view it online. If you don't want to install everything on your computer right now, you can just launch the Binder app, and you will get the Jupyter environment online. The disadvantage of this one is that um, once your session time out, basically all your data are lost. So you need to download your Jupyter notebook uh, before the session times out. That's the main disadvantage. Uh, but it's very good if you just want to try and feel what what's a Jupyter notebook look like. So that's it. Happy coding. <laughs>